Howdy, howdy. This is Mr. Potter. In today's video, we're going to talk a little bit about chars and how pointers work with chars. And there's an interesting relationship between chars and strings, and I'm hoping we can address that today. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new file here, and we're going to call it uh, stringpointer.cpp. And we're going to include the usual suspects, so include IO stream and include uh, string, since we're going to be dealing with strings today, and using namespace standard. So the idea here is that I want to talk about strings from a pointer standpoint, from a reference standpoint. So what we're going to be doing today, I'm going to go ahead and just declare a string here. So I'm going to call it string str, which is going to get this is a test. And I'm going to say string str2 is going to be get str. So basically I've got two variables here. One variable is the string this is a text, and another variable is set to that exact same string. So if I see out str and see out str2, then I'm going to get some predictable behavior. So let's go ahead and compi compile this. So g++ string pointer with an output of string pointer dot exe. And we'll go ahead and uh, run string pointers. And so I see this is a test, this is a test. What I really want to get at today is I want to talk about the nature of a string. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see what happens if I use these brackets that we used almost exclusively for arrays in C Sharp and in Java. So if I recompile this and rerun this, notice that when I ask for str3, it actually tells me what's in position 3 of this string. So there's position 0 is the capital T, position 1 is the lowercase h, the position 2 is the lowercase i, and position 3 is this first s in this is a test. So I can think of a string as an array of chars. And in C Sharp and in Java, I couldn't directly access the contents of a string because the data inside the string was private. I can have that direct access in C++ because one of the things that C++ has, one of its blessings and curses, is that I have a lot more direct access to memory in it. And so when I, when I talk about str3, I actually have a pointer and I know the memory address of the char in position 3. And I can manipulate this. If I really wanted to, I could go in here and say uh, str3 gets, uh, I could put a y in there. And then if I see out str, let me go ahead and save this, compile, and run. Notice that I've changed that letter s to a y. So... I can treat a string just like an array of chars, and it's not a private instance variable. I can directly access that stuff. I can access it. I can modify it. And that makes this pretty powerful stuff. Now, if I wanted to, I could go ahead and... Uh, let me go ahead and get rid of these two lines of code. I want to save that stuff for later in today's videos. But I'm just going to do a loop here for int i gets 0, i is less than str.length i++. Plus plus. I can access the length of a string by just doing the dot length. That's part of this string package up here. And then I can go ahead and see out str sub i. And I'll go ahead and do a space. And then I'll see out an end line to take care of the fence post problem. So we'll compile this and run this. And notice I see this is a test, but because I put spaces between each of these string array elements, each of these char array elements, I've put spaces between each char in the string. Now, right now at this point, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 
characters in this string. So what I can do is I can I can say something like char uh, beyond equals str sub 16. And normally this would cause a problem because this would be an index out of bounds exception. And this is one of those curses that I was talking about with respect to Java. With respect to Java, I mean with respect to C++, I can directly access memory, including the memory beyond the end of this. So if I was to see out beyond, I can actually do that. This program will compile with no issues. Well, except for the fact that I can't put a semicolon here. So let's save that. Compile and run. And notice what happens is I end up with this character here. This character is whatever garbage is in memory, this uninitialized memory beyond the scope of the string. So when I try and access data beyond the string location, I'm going to get whatever happened to be in memory from whatever last program happened to be there. Notice that it's not a traditional ASCII value because it would have been some byte from some other variable because all of the variable types we've talked about bools and ints and shorts and longs they all have different memory sizes whether they use one byte or two byte or four bytes or eight bytes or 16 bytes in the case of long doubles so I just happen to be hitting whatever's in that memory location at the time which is uninitialized Normally, there wouldn't be any way to access it, except I just happen to go beyond the end of the string. And that actually is the way that most malware gets triggered, because they basically go off the end of what is a declared variable into undeclared variable space, and that code ends up getting executed. We'll talk more about that later. What I want to do is I want to get into this idea of what's this direct access of memory, what this actually allows me to do. So I'm going to go back to my code up here, and I actually want to do for int i gets 0, i is less than str.length i++, plus plus, and I want to see out, and instead of just doing str sub i, I actually want to print out the pointer to that, and I want to see what I get out of that. Again, fix the fence post problem. So let's go ahead and save this. Let's compile it and run it. Notice what happens is that when I try and access the pointer, I'm getting everything from that char on. So this is one way that I could do a substring. Notice that starting at position 0, I get from position 0 to the end of the string. Starting at position 8, I'm going to get from position 8 to the end of the string. And starting at position 14, I'm going to get from position 14 to the end of the string. So treating it as a pointer I really kind of insert myself to wherever that position is inside the string and go on to the end of the string. Now what's important to know is that strings are null terminated. In other words, if I was to think about this is a test, the way that I've got it up here, this is char 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, char 10, char 11, char 12, char 13, char 14, and then off here there is a null in position 15. So this is actually going to print everything up to this null. So what I can do is I can manipulate that. I can go up here, let me get rid of this, and I can say that str sub 10 gets null. And now if I try and see out the pointer from str at 0, what I'm actually going to get is not the complete string, but the string up to, wait, that's going to be a problem real quick. I need to make this a char, so I'm going to make this a char that contains 0. So I'm using the escape character for 0. 
So I'm going to compile this and run this. And notice I get this is a... Uh, and that's because char 10 actually is before the word test. So I'm actually terminating the string beforehand. Now, this only works when I use this pointer reference, because if I still try and see out str, notice that what's happened is instead of the string terminating there, I'm actually going to change the letter T in test to a null, which has no width for our purposes, and I see this is an est. Because str, the string object, because we declared it as a string object, it keeps track of its own length. And the length of this str, the length of this string, is still 15. So let me go ahead and print that out real quick to show you. The length of this is still 15. But if I treat it as a pointer, well, then it's going to keep going until it hits the first null it finds and then say, ah, something bad has happened. So it's convenient for us to think of strings as arrays of chars. And in doing so, we can kind of insert ourselves in the middle of a string and read on to the end of the string by using this pointer notation. This pointer notation is actually going to allow us to kind of get into the array rather than dealing with it as a string object. Now, dealing with it as a string object gets me access to methods like length and some of the other methods that we talked about. And also, when we talked about strings before, we talked about how we can concatenate strings just by using a straight plus. And that's because we've overloaded the plus operator to deal with strings. When I'm dealing with char arrays, however, I don't have that luxury. But when I'm dealing with char's array, I have much more control over the memory than I do when dealing with the string object or with the string class. And so we're going to continue to talk about this difference between the string as an array of chars versus a string as an object in later videos. Once again, this is Mr. Potter. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.